Over valley and mountain, river and plain, through wind and storm, rides Anne of the Airlane. Less than 48 hours have passed since Ann Burton resigned from the nurse's staff at the Tyler Sanitarium in order that she may become an air hostess with Interstate Airlines. But in that short time, she has encountered more excitement than most girls will meet with in a lifetime. She and pilot Jack Baker stumble upon a diamond smuggling ring and are forced by two of the members of this ring to fly a stolen air cap speed ship to a small island just off the coast of Florida. This island, elaborately fitted out by the head of the ring, a mysterious dock at the base of the smuggling operations, is menaced by a tropical hurricane, and a last-minute radio call by Jack reaches the receiving station of his young brother Bobby. That youngster, together with radio inspector Art Morrison, co-pilot Pete Peterson, and hostess Kay Thompson, borrow another air cat ship, loaded with gasoline, and take off to rescue their friends. They land just in time to transfer the gas and make a quick takeoff in the face of the 100-mile-an-hour gale that is almost upon them. Will they succeed in making the perilous 50-mile trip to the emergency field on the mainland? Or will the tragic story of one or more of the sturdy aircraft be written in wreckage, strewn upon some tropical beach? Listen. Think we'll make it, Jack? The gas holds out, I think we will. Can you see Morrison? No, I can't from here, but he was... If you're looking for your fair-haired government boy, he's hanging right onto us. I think that he flies just a little too good for a fellow that's supposed to be mixed up with nothing but radio. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Morgan, if he might suspect that you don't exactly sell books or brushes for a living. But I doubt very much that he's any more than just what he says he is. Sure, Vic. I think you're sort of something at your own shadow. That Morrison is okay. He says so himself. Oh, he says so himself, does he? Well, I guess that makes everything all right. How do you like the way this crate handles, Baker? Well, from what I've seen of her, there's not another job in the market like it. It's a lot to get used to, of course. Running ahead of a hurricane is hardly the place to do any test flying. Yeah, and don't forget that them gas tanks ain't exactly connected to an oil well. Well, that reminds me. What does that tank show, Anne? That little gauge right over there. It says, uh, let's see, a little over 50 gallons left. And we put in 75. Well, that's doing a little better than Interstate figured on this ship while they were building it. See, you can get more speed out of this buggy, will you? We're doing all we have to to keep ahead of that storm. We want to keep together. By the way, where's Pete? He's down there, just off the left wing. See? Hey, what's that? An oil line busted or something? A spot on the window. Where? Oh, that. No, but I'm afraid we're in for a bit of rain just to keep the wind company. How about climbing above it, Baker? We don't want to take any chances, do we? Yes, we could climb above it, Morgan, but just remember, as Joe said, we're not connected to an oil well, and all that climbing takes gas. Nope, I think we stay right here and enjoy the rain. Jack, I wonder how Aunt Hattie is enjoying her first real flight. There's nothing the matter with your aunt's nerves. I'll say there ain't. Any sister that'll ride from Springfield to Florida in the baggage compartment like a suitcase or an overnight bag, yeah, and go to sleep like she said she did, there ain't much wrong with her nerves. Say, what's wrong with your friend in front of us? Looks like he's having trouble of some kind. Oh, you mean Pete? He's just waggling his wings. He must see the emergency field and is going in to land. Fine. Let's get down as soon as we can. Start dropping her, will you? Sorry, Morgan, but we just don't do things that way. We'll wait until Pete gets on the ground, and furthermore, we'll stay right up here until Morrison lands that other air cap. Yeah? Well, I said that we land now. I don't intend to stay up until that gale hits. 
And that thunderstorm doesn't make it exactly nice flying weather, either. Morrison is coming up, Jack, and he's waggling his wings, too, as you call it. Okay, watch it. I'm going to signal him back that we understand. Oops. Hey, do you have to do that just to signal? Sorry, Joey, but it's not so easy to handle this ship in this storm. Hey, what's the idea of them going in first? To try to notify the police or something? They're going in first because they have the fastest landing ships. Just in case you don't care about your neck, I have no intention of falling one of them in too soon and banging into them on the ground. So we stay up, storm or no storm, until they're safe on the ground. There's logic to that, Vic. Let him fly the ship. Okay, Baker. But no tricks when we land, see? I think I fully understand. Either of them on the ground, Anne? The rain is so heavy that I can't see all the fields. Oh, yes, yes, I can see all of it now. And Jack, that other plane isn't there either. Other plane? What are you talking about, Anne? Ah, so you did try to pull something, did you? No, we haven't tried to pull anything. I mean that plane that flew over the island just before we took off. You saw it, didn't you, Jack? Yes, and I was just wondering who it was, what he was doing out over the Atlantic with a storm inside. Well, if that ship is down there, we don't go into this field. You get that, Baker? That ship isn't there, Morgan. You can rest easy about that. Vic, there's something about this I don't like. Too many spooky airplanes. First, the one that tried to down us when we came down here. Then the one that flew over us a while ago. I didn't like his look. It ain't nice to throw rocks at you when you get a windstorm on your hands. What do you mean, throwing rocks at you? Nothing. Only I'd have swore that when that plane swooped down over the island back there, while me and Morrison was over at the power plant, that he dropped something that looked like a big rock. But Morrison went over and looked where I thought it landed. He said it wasn't a thing. You sure that Morrison didn't give any kind of a signal to that ship, Joe? I don't know, Vic. I couldn't keep my eyes on him all the time. We had work to do. And that wind was awful. I looked on the way back. There was a big rock there, all right, but that was all. Ah, uh, you're probably seeing things. Well, how about it, Baker? Is the field clear now? Uh, I think so. Looks like Peter's down, and Morrison is just taxing a ship up to that windbreak. But won't it be dangerous to leave the ship there, Jack? Won't those palm trees blow over in this wind if it gets any stronger? Those are not palm trees, then. Those trees that they use for windbreakers on the east side of this field are what they call Australian pines. They'll stand quite a bit of a gale. And the closer we can get the ship to them, the better. Well, better stand by. We may have a rough landing. Think we can use the radio when we land, Baker? With the static in this thunderstorm and the wind, you couldn't get 10 feet away from the ship, Morgan. Well, then the minute we hit, I'm striking for the nearest phone. But get this. I don't want any funny moves. I don't want everybody there when I get back. You see that, will you, Joe? Can't you wait to phone the boys, Vic? The phone lads will be out in an hour or less. And this call is important. Hang on, here we are. Hmm, that was bad, Jack. Well, the first time I've ever landed a ship like this. It certainly has got things all right. You take care of staking her down, Baker. And remember, I'll be back. Boy, I'm sure glad it's you that has to go to a phone. I'll just stay here where it's dry. You better stay in here, Anne. You can always get out if you see that the blow is going to do any harm. Right. We'll stake down the ship. Now, remember what I said. Hey, Jack, stay where you are. Horse around. Take the ship for you. Whoever marked out the field, fix it so we can do it. Thanks, Pete. I'll probably like the drift. He rode it out like a veteran. He wanted to come over here, but I told him to protect Kay until I got back. No use all of us getting soaked. Hey, Morrison, catch this now. Gosh, you tell me that some of these hurricanes last for days. You don't suppose that will have to stay here that long? Can't tell, Joe, but we won't starve in three days. There's certainly no shortage of water. I wish that Mr. Morrison would get in. Aunt Hattie must be frantic by this time. Don't you worry about her. She's got, well, she's got nerve. she has. Nice landing, Jack, for a new job. I'm afraid mine was pretty sloppy. Accept congratulations from a poor flyer, Jack Shea. Huh? Oh, yeah. Thanks, huh? How was that happening, Mr. Morgan? Taking it like she had 10,000 hours to her credit. Asked me so many questions about that air cat that it wouldn't surprise me if she could fly it by this time. And here's one that'll get you. She stowed away some thermos bottles of hot soup on the air cat while we were gassing it up. Hot soup? I told you that you didn't have to worry none about that, sister. She's all right. How much soup she got? Oh, enough to go around, I guess. Said that rain or no rain, she wanted us all to come over there. Or well, she bring the thermos bottles around. He don't have to bring them to me. I'll go after that hot suit right now. Hey, where'd that Morgan go, Jack? I saw him splashing through to the road like you knew where he was going. Well, he said that he was going to... None of that, Baker. You heard Vic tell me not to let you do nothing funny. And that means don't talk too much. All I can do is ask you nothing, you know. Okay, Joe. Well, anyway, Pete, Vic will be back, and he wants to find us all here, so he said. You're coming over after a bottle of that soup. Look, Vic may not like to have too many of you get together. You might frame up something. So you fellas go on back to the ship you flew in, and I'll go and get a bottle of soup and bring it back for Baker and the girlfriend. If Vic ain't here to get any, that's just his hard luck. All right, let's get moving. Take it on the run, huh? 
I'm putting you on your honor, Baker, not to try to get through a phone or nothing till I get back. And remember, if you do, well, a tube slab will be gone when you get back. And I'll hurry you. He's a strange person, Jack. I wonder if he's in this ring as much as we think he is. I wonder that myself, Ann. Look, we haven't got a second. Here's a note that Morrison slipped into my hand when he shook hands with me. I thought there was something peculiar about that. So did I, but I couldn't understand what it was all about. What is it? Wait till I get a little more light from this dash lamp. Why, why, it's a radiogram, and it's addressed to you. Read it, quick. It says, Jack Baker, pilot, in care of Operator X3. You are exonerated of all guilt in recent events. Oh. This is your authority to take complete control of experimental transport ship number NC-9401. Accede to any request by IDS to fly this ship to foreign ports. IDS? What's that, Jack? That stands for Illicit Diamond Syndicate, an organized diamond smuggling ring to foreign ports. Oh. Further instructions from Secret Service Department will reach you on secret frequency, which will be given you by Morrison. Good luck. John Boyle, President, Interstate Airlines. Phew. Well, what do you know about that? But, Jack, where did Morrison get this? He's been with us ever since... Here's a penciled note that Morrison has scribbled. We'll give you secret frequency as soon as storm dies down. Well, Anne, it looks like I'm working Here comes for... Joe. Put that radiogram away. Duke's on, folks. That Morrison fellow is sure good for a lot more than just knowing about radio stations. Boy, look at that steam. Mmm. spoken more truth than he realizes? Is Morrison something more than a radio inspector? And how did he receive the radiogram while under the watchful eyes of the two members of the very gang at, at which its instructions are directed? Will Jack be called upon to join in the activities of the famous illicit diamond syndicate? Or will the cunning brain of the mysterious doc foresee the danger of such a move? What will be the fateful message that Vic will receive? And what will be the part that the impending gale will play in the lives of our friends? For the answers... We must wait until the next stirring episode over the same station at the same time. Be sure to listen in, because we know that you won't want to miss the new thrill, the stirring action of the next chapter in the life of Anne of the Airlines. Mm-hmm.